And now we are going to jump in into a presentation on how to use PowerShell in Azure DevOps. Uh, first, I would like to introduce, my name is Vukas Terzic. I'm currently based in Prague, uh, in Czech Republic. Uh, I work as a solution architect in a company called, uh, uh, it's a consulting company, and I'm currently focused on Azure projects, but uh, I come from operational background, so I spent years in implementing Active Directory and server infrastructures and stuff like that. Uh, today's session is about combining two technologies that changed my professional life completely. Uh, first one was PowerShell, and I discovered PowerShell uh, while I was working in a school. I was the only IT in a large international school, and uh, one of the first tasks was to create like 400 new student accounts and then again 400 emails for them and i didn't want to do that manually so it pushed me to learn powershell and that changed everything from that point on and then many years later there was i think in 2015 uh, i learned about this new thing called azure and everything changed again so today we are talking about uh, how to combine these two technologies that had highest impact on my career. So, uh, before we go to Azure, uh, let's see how we typically run PowerShell and where do we run it. So, uh, on-premises, uh, that can be on a client, that can be our computer, like that can be a Windows, Linux, Linux Mac. Uh, now we have PowerShell Core that is multi-platform, so it can be anything. And we can use it to run uh, like today to day management tasks or to even to execute scripts. Uh, then we can run it on server. Uh, that can be a management server we use, or it can be a domain controller, or it can be a server that we are currently configuring by that PowerShell uh, directly on it or remotely. And then of course, there are other places on premises where you can run it, like uh, I was running PowerShell inside of the switch operating system or uh, in a web browser or something like that. So there, those are not typical scenarios, so let's not mention those. And then you have Azure, and Azure brought uh, different ways on how you can run it. Uh, first and most typical one is you run it inside of Azure VM. Uh, that allows you to use it uh, as you are used to, uh, on a Windows or Linux server of your choice. You can install all dependencies, modules, uh, save your scripts locally or on a server or in a storage account. You can use ISC as you are used to, or you can install uh, VS Code or whatever else you want. Uh, uh, and you can also uh, use it against your Azure subscription from there, but you will have to authenticate first. Uh, and running Azure VM just for this purpose is not very cost optimized solution. And uh, there are other ways to do it, but if you have a server that you use for management and uh, you want to continue your on-premises way of executing scripts, then that's fine. You can, you can do it, it will work just as you are used to. Then there is a cloud shell. Uh, that's uh, uh, from your browser or from the app. Uh, it gives you quick access to your PowerShell core shell that is already logged in into your Azure subscription. You already have all the Azure modules installed. Uh, it's a great tool for performing some tasks like, I don't know, pulling out information, creating new resources. Uh, you can also use it in editor uh, for a multi-line code. But this is not a typical place where you would run all your scripts uh, or like automate something on a schedule. And luckily Azure has automation account uh, and that's great for this purpose. Uh, you can create scripts inside of an Azure automation account and save them as run books. Uh, you can also uh, uh, this is a this is a place where you can store your secrets. You can use secrets inside your scripts, uh, or you can give parameters and use one script with different parameters every time. Uh, you can use different modules. You can uh, your script can have access to your subscription context as well as to your VMs. 
Uh, you with the hybrid worker, you can also run your own books to access your on-premises servers and resources. Uh, these run books are also accessible from different Azure services like, uh, I don't know, Azure Site Recovery or Azure Update Management. Uh, you can run like pre-action or post-action tasks there. And for example, if you create a pre-action task to turn off all your local servers, and then another task that will check if they are really properly turned off. And then after that, you can initiate uh, Azure Site Recovery failover. Uh, or you can deploy stuff in Azure from there or build and destroy entire environments. That's a great stuff. But today present, today's presentation is not about automation account. Then uh, another place where you can run your PowerShell in Azure is uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Azure App Service. Uh, and this works only with PowerShell Core. It generates some extra cost and it has some limitations. So it's a great place to run your app, uh, but not a place for running your daily operation scripts or performing single line command, uh, because basically you don't have an interactive in console interface. And then there is DevOps. Uh, uh, in Azure DevOps, uh, we have a different components and we don't have to use them all. Uh, but the goal of this presentation is uh, to encourage you to start exploring. So uh, I currently use, uh, and not just because of PowerShell, but uh, I currently use most of those uh, components, uh, not really that much test plans. They also generate some extra cost, but uh, uh, I use Azure Boards and I love using Azure Boards. I uh, use Azure Repos, but not that much as, as a GitHub. Uh, and of course, Pipeline. And the Pipeline is the, the, the part of the Azure DevOps that we are interested in and that we will be talking about today. Uh, so for non-developers such myself, <laughs> Uh, using Azure DevOps in the first place uh, meant learning processes and methodologies that I was not familiar with. Uh, in the operations only world, you don't typically have version re releases like you have when you are a software developer. Each version of your application, uh, uh, apart from bringing new functionalities, can also introduce new bugs and break something. Yeah, okay, uh, so a uh, new version of your AD user creation script can also introduce some bugs. But the difference here is that uh, the script is there to automate the process of creating users, not something that end user will use. And so the idea of DevOps uh, creating the bridges between developers that are creating the apps and uh, IT operations that are working with them and allowing them to provide uh, real world feedback back to developers and that, that like accelerate, uh, accelerate the process for new releases is not really why we are here for. Uh, for us in the operations, uh, this is not, uh, it doesn't bring a new value, but there are some other values that uh, we can get from using Azure DevOps as such, and especially for uh, running our, our uh, PowerShell code there. So uh, why, why we should use it then? Well, if you work on a code uh, and you have it like uh, in Azure DevOps, uh, it will make you, and I don't know, that's difficult to explain, but it will make you uh, have your code organized and clean. Uh, especially if you are working uh, on a project with multiple people, uh, this, this is a must. Uh, and you want your code to be clean because, uh, and, and minimal, because it makes everything smoother and easier to troubleshoot. And we will go back to that a little bit later. Uh, the other thing is that you know that your code works because oh, like you can create a tests and all those steps, steps if they're passed, you know that the code will work. Uh, and also it worked a thousand times before, so you can, uh, Think of it as a, as a function. And then each run is well documented. And that's not the case uh, in a normal operations. Uh, yes, you can uh, add as many 
like logging options in your script and you can do that all manually and we all do that and we were doing that when needed but sometimes you don't do it and sometimes it's too much hassle like things to have to do extra and here with devops uh, basically uh, you know uh, what version of code was executed when it was executed on which version of powershell it was running or operating system or dependencies such modules you have that all documented for you and you can replicate it anytime uh, you also know what was the outcome of it and uh, we can even use it to store our logs and temporary files so that's great right so it sounds great uh, so we should use it all the time well <laughs> not really uh, you shouldn't be using azure devops like you're a regular shell uh, that you fire up on your computer to find out uh, ad user membership or i don't know list of vms in your azure subscription but it's a great tool uh, for example when you have scheduled runs so if you have something uh, that you are running on a regular basis and uh, it's it's like an automation task or i don't know cleaning up users creating users something like that then then it's a great place to have your script uh, because it will run on for you uh, or if you want to run something every time you change your code so uh, it's very easy or that's a natural behavior of the let's say of the devops is that uh, it automate automatically uh, automatically activates uh, or executes uh, once you commit your change in the code another very useful uh, very useful feature of the azure devops or the pipeline is that uh, you can have a client uh, it supports different versions of operating system and it supports uh, uh, like versions that you might not have on your computer and I'm talking about like running something on Windows Server 2008 uh, or on a Mac OS or uh, if you want to test something if it works with PowerShell version 7 but in, in your environment you don't have it uh, then it's uh, this is a great scenario when you can uh, make it as a part of your uh, script to install those dependencies and then uh, it will run and then it's easy for you to execute uh, or uh, I use it like let me give you a example here I have a PowerShell module that uh, we use here in my company that I made and it's important to have that module uh, working with Windows Server 2008 and as you know that the uh, expired uh, uh, Windows Server 2008 support expired but if you run it in Azure it's still supported so it's one of the options that you can use in the windows De in the devops and i use it to uh, every time i make a change to check if that module works successfully uh, on the windows server 2008 and uh, we can we can troubleshoot it if not so that's one of the other options uh, or if you want to make it as a part of the larger workflow and uh, uh, so the Azure DevOps pipeline, I locked my computer, I could, okay. <laughs> uh, Azure DevOps pipeline is uh, great for wrapping up different parts of workflow, like combining PowerShell or something else, like uh, our ARM templates or Terraform or something in one single workflow. Uh, because you can have all those prerequisites there and you can run it, run them and execute them, then it's a great place to, to play with all those different things. Uh, so the Azure pipeline is um, right. So uh, we are how we can do it in Azure pipeline. Uh, that's a cloud hosted pipeline that supports many operating systems, programming languages and platforms. Uh, most of those options are not relevant to us because we will just be using PowerShell. Uh, but what's important uh, for us is the build agent version and the PowerShell version. And those two things are connected. So it supports uh, Windows, Linux and Mac OS. Uh, we know that on Windows we can run PowerShell, uh, Windows PowerShell and, uh, and a PowerShell core. 
on Linux and Mac, we can only run PowerShell Core. So uh, that means that if we uh, create a build agent, uh, which is the mm, easily or uh, <laughs> uh, basically it means that uh, the container that is created for us, which is executing our code, will host this operating system. And uh, if we want to run Windows PowerShell, then we, we have to use Windows. Uh, if we need to use PowerShell Core, then we can use anything. Uh, and uh, uh, there is also a way to install or um, test with specific version of PowerShell Core. Uh, one way is to use uh, different versions of operating systems or the build agents that already have this built in or you can even run it with the newest version and that will require basically downloading the installation file from the github uh, the new versions of powershell core they have a installation file and uh, then you run that file inside of your container and that will install the, the version you need. And then in your code, of course, you have to say uh, that require that specific version. I will show that in a little bit in a demo. And so how can we run PowerShell uh, in a pipeline? Uh, that means we can run it directly from a pipeline. Uh, we can run it in a, uh, this will be like one line, uh, one-liner, so that's like we are used to. Uh, we open a PowerShell in our computer, we type a command, execute the command. Or this can be also a multi-line script. Uh, and there are many ways on how, or few ways how can we run a multi-line script. Uh, or it can be a PowerShell task. And so the PowerShell task, or the tasks in general, are, are basically the building blocks of Azure DevOps pipelines. There are many built-in tasks. And we can also download other tasks via an extension uh, in the extension marketplace. Uh, PowerShell is one of the um, built-in tasks that is already there. And that gives us a little bit more flexibility than if we just use a multi-line script or one-line script. Uh, and each of those tasks are defined as a step in a pipeline. And then we can pass them like parameters, configure failing errors, uh, uh, options and so on. Or we can run a script from a file. Uh, basically, we can have a repository and have a file saved there. Uh, uh, and that can be Azure repositories or a GitHub, or there are many other supported versions. Uh, or you can have this file stored in, a, like, let's say, multiple repositories, and then you can uh, check out all of them if needed and download them and use them there. Or you can have your script saved somewhere else, like, I don't know, storage account or inside an Azure VM if you want. That's not really recommended, but uh, it's doable. Uh, you just need to grant access to pipeline to, uh, to access there and create a task to have your file copied first. So enough of talking, let's see how we can do that. So I have a Azure pipeline here. If you are not familiar with uh, Azure DevOps, uh, uh, what you can do is that you go to devazure.com uh, and create a new organization. Uh, I mean, that also depends if you are allowed to do that in your subscription, but you should be allowed to do that in your subscription uh, if you are using free trial. And then uh, in those subscriptions, you can create your projects. So I created a very simple project. I didn't add any descriptions and didn't add any files to it yet, or I did, but not that much. Uh, uh, but the project is the place where you will typically have uh, all your project files. You will have uh, people assign access to projects and uh, and uh, you will have a description here. And then you can use all those Azure services that you saw before, Azure DevOps services. So we are using Azure repositories to save our files. 
Uh, using Azure Depositories is very simple. Uh, if you are, you have to connect it to your computer and uh, upload files from there, or you can upload files directly from here and use it just in a browser. Of course, that will not be a typical scenario, but yes, you can do. Uh, and I currently created just two uh, files. One is the pipeline that we will be working with, and uh, one is the, just a simple uh, PowerShell script. So let's take a look at the pipelines. And I have one pipeline here. Uh, maybe I can start from the beginning. Let's see how we can create a new pipeline. Just uh, 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 if you have any questions so far, uh, please let me know. We can stop at any time and, and continue with the questions. OK. So uh, I'm not going to create a new pipeline, pipeline, but I'm just going to show you how. So first step is to uh, create, uh, to select where is your code, right? So the pipeline needs to work with the code uh, and uh, we can select one of the options here. You can see that you can also have like your own hosted uh, you, you Git, rep Git repository or something like that. But uh, like most common options are Git or Azure repo. And then once you select it, Oh, uh, also there are two types of pipelines. One is a, a classic pipeline, which is a graphical version that you can use. And to do that, you can select it from here. And then for that pipeline, you don't have to write any code. You just uh, uh, use the options that are already there for you. But uh, it's not that flexible and it doesn't support all the options as the YAML pipeline. So the YAML pipeline is something that Microsoft prefers and uses now. However, <laughs> uh, uh, YAML is something that was completely new for me and I had to learn it. Microsoft has great documentation on how to, uh, on how to start with the YAML. There, everything is documented so you can, you can start from there. But, uh, but it is a new thing and it's difficult uh, it's a little bit different than PowerShell because it also counts spaces and stuff like that. So uh, you have to think about those things. But once you get used to it, it's not that bad. And then you select it and then you create your pipeline. Go back, I already have mine. Uh, this is my pipeline. And uh, 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 what I did, I created a started, uh, starter uh, uh, Azure pipeline. Uh, I didn't show that, but there are many different types of pipeline that are already pre-created for you and you can use them to run. So uh, I mentioned that uh, we have uh, different containers. So, uh, uh, so this is the pool. And currently, in my, content, my uh, build agent will be using the latest version of Windows. Uh, this can be specified to specific version, or I can use different Linux or Mac OS, as we mentioned before. Also mentioned that you can run PowerShell as a one-line or multi-line code. So I have that here, and as you remember, I created a step. And then running a single line of PowerShell is simple like this. This is all I need to do. Uh, and if I want to use PowerShell core, then I can use this instead. Uh, uh, on Windows, this makes difference because on Windows, I can run both versions and they are already there pre-installed for me. But on Linux, uh, the both commands will execute the PowerShell core. Uh, so, uh, even if I type PowerShell, because there is no Windows PowerShell on it, uh, it will still run PowerShell core. That's something to, uh, uh, I'm not sure if everyone's scripts are ready to work in a PowerShell core, so it's something to have to think about. Uh, I didn't comment this out, but we can run it. So let's run this pipeline and see what will happen. So we see it created a job and that job will start executing. 
So uh, first job will be to check out my code. Uh, we are not going to use a code now for the first line, but uh, let's see, checking out the code from this repository, and now it's running my code. And as you can see, it was write host. This is one line script, so it's here. And that code could be anything else. Uh, it didn't have to be just the write host, because having a write host here is, of course, uh, no use of that. But uh, if we created some uh, like command that executes, I don't know, uh, create new cluster or something like that, that, that would work perfectly. Go back to our pipeline, uh, and now if I uncomment those, this uh, there will be no difference. The execution will be exactly the same. Uh, one thing we I didn't have mention. Question for you. Okay, perfect. Uh, so first one is how to join multiple tasks in pipeline through PowerShell. Okay. Uh, so the question will be uh, the, the answer will be. Uh, if they are multiple tasks, then you can create the multiple steps. And I'm, I was just going to show that, that uh, you can create the next step. So the first one here was to execute some task number one, and then the next step would be to execute step, uh, step number two or task number two. So that would be one of the ways to do it. And is there a second question? Yes, so do we have task to install PowerShell core in Linux? Uh, well, you don't have to do it. Uh, it already comes with a pre-installed. Uh, but as I mentioned before, you can have uh, uh, you can have a specific version installed. Uh, uh, and that can be done. I actually have a opened a GIST page here. So uh, and I use this recently. Uh, so what you are looking at is uh, is basically using uh, install PowerShell PS1, which is on this address. And this is uh, how Microsoft gives you the option to install PowerShell 7. Uh, and uh, you can choose then which version of that you want to use. And then, of course, there is a parameter that, that's the daily version, and that's the most current version. Uh, that's, that's something that you can use for testing, but it's, not def it's definitely not something that you will be using for uh, production. Uh, instead of the version daily here, you would use uh, some specific version, probably something older, some stable build that, uh, that you want to test it on. Uh, however, the the most recent uh, most recent stable version, long term version, is already installed on those Linux uh, build agents. And uh, if you are not sure uh, which version is installed, then you can always run a uh, run a task here, which will be, for example, this. And now, if we run it. Uh, by the way, uh, I skipped this uh, step because it's not related to PowerShell, uh, but basically this trigger means uh, how our pipeline is triggered. And our pipeline is triggered by the changes in our master branch of our Azure repo that we are connected to. So as you saw it, I didn't have to press run on this pipeline. I only had to press uh, save and that automatically executed. Uh, if you are running some like scheduled task, I, I will come back to that a little bit later. There are different ways how you can run it, but I left the default, which is this. So my, okay, it failed. Uh, I know why it failed, it's good. <laughs> Uh, it's good. Uh, you can see what happens if the fail, and we will come back a little bit later on the uh, last exit code, and we will explain what that is. So it fa it failed because it was uh, not a text, and I had uh, one extra uh, quote there.
Uh, what's also important to understand or learn is that uh, Azure Pipeline uh, Azure Pipeline supports uh, uh, supports multiple types of scripts, uh, and uh, that can be a PowerShell, that can be a Bash script or a Batch script. Uh, directly here from from the pipeline and basically with those three types uh, you can do basically almost anything from here so now we saw it executed uh, and I can see that the version of this operating system is 5.1 uh, let's have a little bit fun and change the build agent uh, I'm just going to comment this out I don't have to but it takes longer uh, something for later uh, so let's change our build agent here and we are going to use okay so now when I execute it's going to run inside of the Ubuntu and we will see uh, that even though I, I specified PowerShell it's going to run push <laughs> which is uh, which is the execu executable name of PowerShell core uh, uh that that's default so uh let's see oh i didn't save it sorry about that now when we save it uh it's going to run again and this time is going to run uh inside of ubuntu which we can see that here and now it's going to execute our script and it works the same and we can see that I didn't have to install it manually uh, and it's the version 7 and as I mentioned uh, default version is uh, default version is the latest stable build and version 7 is the latest stable build okay and if we use this uh, we can get something like 7.2 or 7 Point zero point one or two I don't know I think two is coming next week so this week is still uh, zero zero point one maybe I rock okay so I hope that answers your question uh, let's go back to our pipeline I'm not going to keep uh, I'm going to continue with Windows uh, right so that's how you run one line code uh, to run two uh, multi line code is basically like this. You put the pipe or this character i don't know how that's called i call it the pipe because in a, it's a pipe in a powershell <laughs> uh, so you put that there and then on the next line uh, you you create a multi-line code that's the second way or one of the ways how you can run a multi-line code script and uh, this the same method will work uh, for ba for bash or batch scripts as well just this will be different okay right so uh, we still have time uh, now the, the other way to run uh, powershell uh, here directly from pipeline is to create a powershell task and as i mentioned we have a right wide range of tasks uh, already there for us and then we can install some tasks from uh, extension gallery uh, mm, typically you will not find everything you need but uh, it's growing and there are many tasks like being added so powershell is one of those that is built in so let's take a look and as you can see we have different types of powershell tasks but we are interested in this one and what this will do is it will give us a graphical user interface for us uh, to create a task and uh, when you finish uh, filling this up and you create add, uh, it's going to add it. It will insert those lines where your cursor is. So be aware that you should not have it here in the middle of sentence because then it will break your code. Uh, have it on the place where you want to be inserted. So let's create a simple PowerShell task. One uh, we are going to use inline script and it already has a hello world here for us. So we are going to keep that. Uh, what else we can create is the error action preference. So uh, default one is stop, and even if you don't uh, add it, uh, it will create a 
it will like be as a stop. Uh, and what that means that uh, if uh, we saw that there are multiple like jobs here inside of our pipeline, uh, if we create the, the one with the stop, then and if that doesn't work, if there is an error here, uh, it's going to stop there and it's basically going to break our, it's not going to let other tasks complete. Uh, depending on what your code is, on how you build your pipeline, uh, maybe for you it will be okay to continue with uh, with the running the other tasks if there is something that you expect. So you can create continue or silently continue. And then there are those advanced uh, advanced parameters uh, that you can fill in. However, there are just three here, or basically four with this one. Uh, five, sorry. So there are five, but those are not all. So uh, I'm going to show you that a little bit later. So for now, let's keep it as it is and let's set add. And as you can see, that created another task. Uh, like basically, that's a task in our in our pipeline. Uh, and uh, we know that it's an inline script, uh, but it's a multi-line. And uh, here is our script. So if we run this now, it's going to write save write host. Uh, hello world. The problem here, or not the problem, but uh, uh, what's missing here is, uh, for example, display name. So uh, if you don't put a display name in your task, then in here uh, you are going to see something called uh, PowerShell task 2, but you don't know what that, that's doing, what that is doing. And so the best practice is, of course, to immediately add display name and we are going to call it uh, of course there is no <laughs> or now let's say something else hello world task okay uh, and now when if we run it uh, we are going to see that user friendly name here the other thing I mentioned is that there were some parameters missing. And so I created a, a task here now with all the parameters that we need uh, or they are available. And let me just explain you those first. Uh, so uh, inputs, uh, inputs is or uh, there is also an option uh, to have like a call a script from a file. But this is that script is written here. Uh, and then we have a fail on standard error, ignore last exit code, and error action preferences. So basically, those uh, uh, parameters allows us to specify uh, how we want our uh, error to behave. Or uh, if something fails, we want to specify how our script or how our pipeline is going to behave. Uh, another option is to use arguments, and in this, and and this is, um, for example, if you have a script or a function in your script that uh, expects some arguments, like I have a function function called uh, get user and is expecting par uh, parameter user, then you can feed that in here, and uh, once you uh, execute it, uh, this the my function that is expecting argument user will receive it from here. Uh, other option here is to use PowerShell, uh, PowerShell core. Uh, basically, if we have a Windows, uh, we can set this to true or false. Uh, if we set it to true, then it will run it in a PowerShell core. Uh, if we have uh, Linux, then, then this is default true and there is no way to turn it off. And then a working directory is uh, basically a directory inside of our container where our file where this is executing uh, where we want our script to work so something like a working directory you have in our publisher locally okay so uh, to continue from that uh, there is also so is this clear how we can create a powershell task i think it is i think it's pretty simple uh, <laughs> Okay, no questions. So now let's see uh, how to create a task uh, to run 
uh, a script, right? So again, we go here, PowerShell, uh, and this time it's going to be a file path. And basically what we are going to do is to choose uh, to choose our file. And this has to be a local path to the file. I already have that here. So sorry for skipping. Uh, let me put that up and I'm going to uncomment. Unfortunately, ML doesn't have a multi-line comment, so you have to do it like this. Uh, and so what I'm doing here uh, first is uh, I'm uh, basically using uh, a script called slides. And uh, this script that I have here now is a very simple uh, basic script, but uh, what uh, you have to think about, and, and this is very important to understand, is that the build agent that you are you using is a fresh new instance every single time. Uh, there is a way to use your custom image, but that makes everything complicated. So let's say that uh, every time you execute your task, you will have a uh, a new version or like fresh fresh version of it. Uh, running and it's important to uh, think about uh, uh, that you have to prepare it right so sometimes your scripts require some modules uh, sometimes your script has to connect for example to I don't know office 365 so uh, what I use this for uh, real world example here so I have a client that is using Azure only they don't have a local infrastructure they only have Azure AD everything is uh, in cloud, basically. Identities, computers are managed from cloud, they are AAD joined and stuff like that. So there is no like management server now that I can run and, uh, and take care of some management tasks, but uh, I want to uh, run uh, identity management script, basically when the new people uh, are coming to company or if they are leaving the company, uh, I have this pipeline connected to uh, HR system. It pulls out information from uh, HR system uh, and it finds out the users that are that are new and uh, it has to create them or they change their position in the company or they change their group membership or they changed or, or they are fired or they are leaving so they have to be terminated. And, and so uh, I get all that information from the HR system and then I run it here in the pipeline, in the DevOps, uh, like on a daily basis uh, to create or remove users, right? Ty typical identity management uh, script. And, and that's great, but for that, I need a lot of prerequisites. I need like three or four PowerShell modules. I need to connect uh, to power, uh, to, uh, to HR, I need to download some SFT files from SFTPs and stuff like that. And so uh, I have to install PowerShell modules uh, and connect or uh, and connect to uh, like Exchange Online every single time I run it. And you would not do that on your computer because you already have that installed and you think it's like normal, but uh, but you have to do that here. So that that's important thing to understand. Okay, so uh, and uh, and then the other thing I have showed here is that uh, using that error action preference, uh, I have silent continue, and then I'm passing some arguments. Uh, currently in my script, uh, there are no arguments expected, so uh, this is just for you to show you. So basically, this is the parameter name, and this is its value, and this is the second parameter name and its value. And if my uh, my script ex it was expecting param one and param two, uh, th those are the values that it will receive. Uh, then another, or let's try and run that. So let's save, save, and we are running. And we are also running out of time, so <laughs> I'm <laughs> don't want to uh, make it too long. Uh, and now you'll see that I have more tasks here because I uncommented those, those tasks, so it should be a little bit longer. Uh, while we are waiting, I just want to mention that uh, for each uh, 
this is of course not free, uh, but you do get 30 hours of free runtime per month. So, uh, uh, and there's a limit of users that can use it and share it. But uh, if you make your repository public, then it's completely free. But you have, if you have a private repository, which means that you have some company data and stuff like that, uh, then uh, then you have 30 hours per month of free runtime. And for us, this took 10 seconds. So <laughs> we are okay with that. So this is our task and it says, hello world. And here's my script. So uh, the script was simple, but as you can see, checking prerequisites, installing modules, connecting to Azure AD and stuff like that. And uh, what you would see here is that it's a normal uh, output that you will get if you run your script locally. So that's a great way to utilize the serverless solution and, and run your scripts. Uh, and also, as I mentioned in the beginning, you can choose uh, many different operating systems and dependencies and stuff like that. Okay, so let's go back. And there is one more thing that I would like to cover, uh, and that's uh, variables. So, uh, of course, you have to work with the variables. And uh, uh, you don't want to save, uh, uh, for example, you don't want to save your variables in a script because script can be uh, script can be one, but you can have multiple pipelines for different uh, for different projects or different tasks, and you, they are using the same script. So you can uh, define your variables here directly in the pipeline, or you can create something, uh, or you can create a, in here a library of variables, and those this library let me go here. Uh, what you would do is that you would create a variable group and then you can enter them here manually or you can uh, take them as a secrets from uh, uh, Azure Key Vault. And that's great because if you work with the passwords, uh, then only thing you have to do is to authorize the pipeline to have access to, or it only needs read, uh, list and read access to the Key Vault and then you can uh, pull directly uh, variables from Key Vault, Key Vault and use them in your scripts. So that's also a great way to use it with your secrets and everything. Uh, and then uh, that's one of the ways. And the second way is to use it, use it here directly. Uh, you can also create variables. Let me uncomment that. So uh, this is going to set variable uh, called var1, and this will be the value. Uh, you can set them inside of, the, it's not going to be like this, but it will be rather something like this. That's another option. Uh, quickly, uh, just thinking what I didn't mention. Uh, uh, I didn't mention maybe like errors. Uh, you can modify like the behavior of what will happen. I, I did actually mention that, but I didn't mention that uh, you can also show uh, custom errors and warnings in the job logs. Uh, and uh, may, you can even like uh, create, uh, uh, you can even create like action on the error based on the error type. So that's it. Uh, I can go on and on, like more in depth. I'm sorry, this session was not that much in depth. Uh, uh, there are a few things to cover. There are a few things to think about, like the troubleshooting is a little bit different than you are used to, uh, because we are now working with the multi-environment here in one place. So for example, I'm calling script here like this, but if this was in a Linux container, then the, this slash will be the opposite. Right, it will be like this, and 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 so there are a few differences, few things that you have to think about, uh, and and this comes with using it. It's it's not something that you do well on the first try, but once you do it, it it works. Uh, I didn't, however, show you how you can uh, set a trigger, 
and let's do that as, a, as the one last time. So I mentioned that this can be uh, done as a scheduled task. And so right now we have something called continuous integration enabled, and that basically means that once I uh, submit my code, uh, commit my code, uh, it starts to, con to, to integrate automatically. Uh, with, with, uh, so I don't know if you saw how I did it, uh, but uh, in, in a pipeline, uh, when I'm in the pipeline, the easiest way to get there is to go here, triggers, and then we can override that continuous integration and we can create something like a scheduled task or something like that. So uh, I can create a schedule uh, to run it every Monday at specific time and so on. So uh, the problem with this is that uh, in here that will not be showed in the pipeline directly, but uh, it you will have to uh, go here and find out that it's done like this. Okay. So that's it uh, about uh, running PowerShell. Uh, if you are interested, I can give you some real world examples uh, how this is used and when this is used, or I can type them out later in the comment section. Uh, any questions? If you have any questions, just unmute yourself and ask. Yes, please. I can continue talking if you want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also mentioned that everything is documented, so uh, as you can see here, uh, we can see which version of our uh, branch and which branch and which version of code was run. Uh, and then in here you can see all the outputs. So that's that's basically the, all the documentation you need and it contains all the information. And then plus you would uh, use it to uh, like uh, upload or create an artifact, for example, that can connect, uh, contain all the folders you need. Uh, Azure Pipeline go works great with uh, Azure services. So it's very easy to, and actually you have for that. So it's now we are going about uh, beyond the limits of just PowerShell, but basically the PowerShell script needs to work with different things. And I said that it's great. It's This is a great place to wrap out, up like different projects. So for example, you can combine it with Azure CLI. Uh, you can use Azure file copy, for example, or Azure Key Vault, which will download the secrets from Key Vault. Uh, you can upload files uh, directly to a storage account. Uh, you can even like up download files to your local computers. So one uh, one of the things that I have here done with Azure DevOps is that uh, uh, we use some PowerShell module and, or the customer at the use, uses uh, the PowerShell module uh, to execute some like IT, IT people use it to execute some tasks and uh, there are like two or three people in the company working on improving this uh, PowerShell module but there is around like 20 people using it and so what we did with uh, Azure DevOps is that uh, basically every time when they uh, uh, create their uh, module uh, like changes in their module and uh, Azure DevOps runs tests like Pester and, and uh, I don't know, like a few different ways of testing it. And uh, and if that's all okay and everything works, uh, then we use it to deploy this new version of code uh, to local client computers of those IT, other 25 IT people. And basically they will not even notice that something changed, but we ensure that those uh, 20 IT guys uh, always have the newest version of the module. So it's great for automation, stuff like that. Okay, that's all for me. Uh, thanks everyone. And I would like to use this opportunity to thanks everyone who organized the uh, Global Bootcamp. And thanks you, thank you for having me here and presenting. Thank you.